Hello and welcome to the Bible with Briscoe 2021. I am your messenger of the Word of God, Shenandoah Briscoe. Today we're going to be reading Exodus 4 through 6 and Matthew 14, 22 through 36. Father, I just ask for clarity of voice so that the reading of your Word will be a blessing to you and for all of those who have tuned in from all around the world. In Jesus' mighty name, Amen. And they all said, Amen. Signs for Moses Exodus 4 Moses answered, What if they do not believe me or listen to me and say, The Lord did not appear to you? Then the Lord said to him, What is that in your hand? A staff, he replied. The Lord said, Throw it on the ground. Moses threw it on the ground, and it became a snake and he ran from it. Then the Lord said to him, Reach out your hand, and take it by the tail. So Moses reached out his, and took, reached out and took hold of the snake, and it turned back into a staff in his hand. This, said the Lord, is so that they may believe that the Lord of the Lord, the God of their fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, has appeared to you. Then the Lord said, Put your hand inside your cloak. So Moses put his hand into his cloak, and when he took it out, the skin was leprous. It had become as white as snow. Now put it back into your cloak, he said. So Moses put his hand back into his cloak, and when he took it out, it was restored like the rest of his flesh. Then the Lord said, If they do not believe you or pay attention to the first sign, they may believe the second. But if they do not believe these two signs or listen to you, take some water from the Nile and pour it on the dry ground. The water you take from the river will become blood on the ground. Moses said to the Lord, Pardon your servant, Lord. I have never been eloquent, neither in the past nor since you have spoken to your servant. I am slow to speech and tongue. I am slow of speech and tongue. And the Lord said to him, who gave human beings their mouths? Who makes them deaf or mute? Who gives them sight or makes them blind? Is it not I, the Lord? Now go, I will help you speak and will teach you what to say. But Moses said, Pardon your servant, Lord. Please send someone else. Then the Lord's anger burned against Moses, and he said, What about your brother Aaron, the Levite? I know he can speak well. He is already on his way to meet you, and he will be glad to see you. You shall speak to him and put words in his mouth. I will help both you speak and will teach you what to do. He will speak to the people for you, and it will be as if he were your mouth and as if you were God to him. But take this staff in your hand, so you can perform the signs with it. Moses returns to Egypt. Exodus 4.18 Then Moses went back to Jethro, his father-in-law, and said to him, Let me return to my people in Egypt to see if any of them are still alive. Jethro said, Go, and I wish you well. Now the Lord had said to Moses in Midian, Go back to Egypt, for all those who want to kill you are dead. So Moses took his wife and sons, put them on a donkey, and started back to Egypt. And he start, took the staff of God in his hand. The Lord said to Moses, When you return to Egypt, See that you perform before Pharaoh all the wonders I have given you the power to do. But I will harden his heart, so that he will not let the people go. 
Then say to Pharaoh, This is what the Lord God says, so that he will not... <laughs> says, Israel is my firstborn son, and I tell, told you, let my son go. He may worship, so he may worship me, but you refuse to let him go, so I will kill your firstborn son. At a lodging place, at a lodging place on the way, the Lord met Moses and was about to kill him, but Zephyrah took a flint knife, cut off his son's foreskin, and touched Moses' feet with it. Surely you are a bridegroom of blood to me, she said. So the Lord let him alone. At that time, she said, bridegroom of blood, referring to circumcision. The Lord said to Aaron, go into the wilderness to meet Moses. So he met Moses at the mountain of God and kissed him. Then Moses told Aaron everything the Lord had sent him to say, and about all the signs he had commanded him to perform. Moses and Aaron brought together all the elders of the Israelites, and Aaron told them everything the Lord had told, said to Moses. He also performed the signs before the people. And they believed, and when they heard that the Lord was concerned about them, and had said, sent their, seen their misery, they bowed down and worshipped. Bricks without straw, Exodus 5 Afterward, Moses and Aaron went to Pharaoh and said, This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. Let my people go, so that they may hold a festival to me in the wilderness. Pharaoh said, Who is the Lord that I should go, or should obey him and let Israel go? I do not know the Lord, and I will not let Israel go. And then they said, The God of the Hebrews has met with us now. Let us take a three-day journey into the wilderness to offer sacrifices to the Lord our God, or he may strike us with plagues or with the sword. But the king of Egypt said, Moses and Aaron, why are you taking the people away from their labor? Get back to your work. Then Pharaoh said, Look, the people of the land are now numerous, and you are stopping them from working. That same day Pharaoh gave to his order gave this order to the slave drivers and overseers in charge of the people. You are no longer to be supplied the you are no longer to supply the people with straw for making bricks. Let them go and gather their own straw, but require them to make the same number of bricks as before, and don't reduce the quota. They are lazy. That is why they are crying out. Let us go and sacrifice to our God. Make the work harder for the people so that they keep working and pay no attention to lies. Then the slave drivers and the overseers went out and said to the people, This is what Pharaoh says, I will not give you any more straw. Go and get your own straw, wherever you can find it. But your work will not be reduced at all. So the people scattered all over Egypt to gather stubble to use for straw. The slave drivers kept pressing them, saying, Complete the work required of you for each day just as when the you had the straw and pharaoh's slave drivers ba beat the israelite overseers they had appointed demanding why haven't you met your quota of bricks yesterday or today as before then the israelite overseers went and appealed to pharaoh why have you treated your servants this way? 
your servants are giving you no straw, yet we are told, make bricks, your servants are being beaten. But the fault is with your, you, with your own people. Pharaoh said, lazy, that's what you are, lazy. That is why you keep saying, let us go and sacrifice to the Lord. Now, get to work. You will not be given any straw, yet you must produce your full quota of rigs. The Israelite overseers re realized they were in trouble when they were told, you are not to reduce the number of bricks required of you for each day. When they left Pharaoh, they found Moses and Aaron waiting to meet them. And they said, May the Lord look on you and judge you. You have made an obnoxious you have made us obnoxious to Pharaoh and his officials, and have, have put a sword in their hand to kill us. God promises deliverance. Exodus 5.22 Moses returned to the Lord and said, Why, Lord, why have you brought trouble on these people? Is this why you sent me? Ever since I went to Pharaoh to speak in your name, he has brought trouble on your on this people, and you have not rescued your people at all. Exodus 6 Then the Lord said to Moses, Now you will see what I will do to Pharaoh because of my mighty hand, and he will let them go. Because of my mighty hand, he will drive them out of his country. God also said to Moses, I am the Lord. I appeared to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob as God Almighty. But by my name, the Lord, I did not make myself fully known to them. I also established my covenant with them to give them the land of Canaan, where they reside as foreigners. Moreover, I have heard the groaning of Canaan, where they reside as foreigners. Moreover, I have heard the groaning of the Israelites, whom the Egyptians are enslaving, and I have remembered my covenant. Therefore, say to the Israelites, I am the Lord, and I will bring you out from under the yoke of the Egyptians. I will free you from being slaves to them, and I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and with mighty acts of judgment. I will take you as my own people, and I will be your God. Then you will know that I am the Lord your God, who brought you out from under the yoke of the Egyptians, and I will bring you to the land I swore with uplifted hands to give to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. I will give it to you as a possession. I am the Lord. And Moses reported this to the Israelites, but they did not listen to him because of their discouragement and harsh labor. Then the Lord said to Moses, Go tell Pharaoh, king of Egypt, to let the Israelites go out of his country. But Moses said to the Lord, If the Israelites will not listen to me, why would Pharaoh listen to me, since I speak with faltering lips? The Family Record of Moses and Aaron Exodus 6.13 Now the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron about the Israelites and Pharaoh king of Egypt, and he can commanded them to bring the Israelites out of Egypt. And these were the heads of their families. The sons of Reuben, the firstborn son of Israel, were Hanak and Palul, Hezron and Karamai. These were the clans of Reuben. The sons of Simon were Jemuel and Jemang, Ohad, 
Jachin, Zohar, and Shaul, the son of the Canaanite woman. These were the clans of Simon. These were the names of the sons of Levi, according to their records, Gershon, Kohath, and Marari. Levi lived 137 years. The sons of Gershon, by clan, were Libani and Shimei. The sons of Kohath were Amariam, Ezra, Hebron, and Uziel. Koath lived 133 years. The sons of Merari were Mahalai and Mushi. These were the clans of the Levi, according to their record. Aram married his father's sister, Jacobed, who bore him Aaron and Moses. Aram lived 137 years. The son of Izahar were Kara, Nepheg, and Zikir. The sons of Uzel were Mishel, Elzaphan, and Stethra. Aaron married Elsheba, Elsheba, daughter of Amineb, and sister of Nashon. And she bore him Nadab and Abihu, Elzer and Ithamar. The sons of Korah were Azariah, no, Azir, sorry, were Azir, Elikon, and Abiseth. These were the Korahite clans. Elisar, son of Aaron, married one of the daughters of Puteli, and she bore him Phineas. These were the heads of the Levi's family, Levite families, clan by clan. It was this Aaron and Moses to whom the Lord said, Bring the Israelites out of Egypt by their divisions. And they were the ones who spoke to Pharaoh, king of Egypt, about bringing the Israelites out of Egypt. The same Moses and Aaron. This same Moses and Aaron. Now, when the Lord spoke to Moses in Egypt, he said to him, I am the Lord. Tell Pharaoh, king of Egypt, everything I tell you. But Moses said to the Lord, Since I speak with faltering lips, why would Pharaoh listen to me? Okay, that was Exodus 4 through 6. Now, we'll be turning to Matthew 14, 22 through 36. Matthew 22, Matthew 14, 22. Jesus walks on water. Matthew 22, 14, sorry, Matthew 14, 22. Immediately, Jesus made the description, disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side, while he dismissed the crowd. After he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. Let that night, later that night, he was there alone, and the boat was already a considerable distance from the land. <laughs> buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it shortly before dawn Jesus went out to them walking on the lake and when the disciples saw him walking on the lake they were terrified it's a ghost they said and cried out in fear but Jesus immediately said to them take courage it is I. Do not be afraid. Lord, if it is you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came towards Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and began to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. 
Immediately Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. Ye of little faith, he said, why did you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly you are the Son of God. When they had crossed over, they landed at Genesaret. And when the men of the, that place recognized Jesus, they set the word, sent the word all to all the surrounding country. And people brought all their sick to him and begged him to let the sick just touch the edge of his cloak, and all who touched it were healed. And that, my friends, is Matthew fourteen twenty six through thirty six or twenty two through thirty six. Which concludes the Bible with Briscoe twenty twenty one for today. Tomorrow we will be reading Exodus seven through eight and Matthew fifteen one through twenty. Father, I just thank you for your word, because without your word, I would not be able to be a, your messenger of the word, Shendo Grisco. So, in Jesus' mighty name, I praise you and worship you. Amen. And they all said, Amen. All right, friends, that's uh, the end of the Bible with Grisco 2021 for today. Please come back and see me tomorrow, because, well, you know, God loves you, and so do I. So come back and see us tomorrow. We'll be here, and I hope that you are too.